ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فقد امن الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد he was not known as a sahabi that was courageous like ali radiyallahu anhu in his battles neither was he known as a sahabi who was so generous like uthman radiyallahu anhu that would donate left right and center in every single opportunity that arises neither was he known as a person who whose chivalrous character and his ghayra for islam was at the peak like umar radiyallahu anhu nor was he known like an individual amongst those who are the ulama of the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam like abu huraira or aisha radiyallahu anha neither was he known amongst the companion for abundance of his prayers for abundance of his ibada none of that but despite that fact rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam arrives at the doorsteps of this beautiful sahabi He comes to him as the hadith of Bukhari mentions and he says I have come to you because Allah has commanded me to come to you. And not only that Allah has commanded me to come to you and to recite Quran to you. And another narration in specific to recite Lam yakun alladhina kafaru surah bayna So the Sahabi Ubay ibn Ka'ab, he says, Awa Samman, did Allah mention, did Allah mention my name? But like Allah used my name? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Naam, Samak, he used your name. Ubay ibn Ka'ab was one of the best reciters of the Qur'an. There's multiple narrations that we hear that if you want to hear Quran as if it was revealed ratban habban if it was fresh and sweet then let them listen to the the qira'a or the recitation of Ubay ibn Ka'b He attained this maqam because he connected himself to the book of the highest maqam which is Quran He was able to Allah mentioned him and commanded his prophet on whom Quran was being revealed to go and recite Quran to this person because of his connection and attachment to Quran we are going through this blessed month of Ramadan i understand that every single one of us has varying you know uh, variabilities of their schedules and everything that happens including myself and many of us we may have started ramadan with this resolve that they're going to finish 2 3 whatever 1 2 3 qurans and come 5 days before ramadan ends we may not be anywhere close to that goal that we had set for ourselves at least that's true for me and the reality of the matter is that is true for life life is such you are going to set goals and life is going to come in between the ones who succeed at the end of the day are not the ones who cry and wail on the fact that they lost the remaining 25 days they don't cry over their past but they learn from their past and they stand up and they start moving towards the future you still have five more days to go five more days where we can connect and reconnect with quran five more days where we can fix the 25 days that we were not able to and create a new schedule for ourselves my advice for people now is that in the next 5 days if you have not been able to connect with quran truly then create a schedule forget about finishing the quran but start a schedule that you can sustain and maintain post ramadan so if it is one page two pages three pages whatever you can do 
take, make that your schedule. And you're going to say that I'm going to re recite at Fajr, at Maghrib, at Isha, whatever time. Let's not look for the ideal time at this moment. What we look for is connecting ourselves and attaching ourselves to a constant, consistent recitation of the Quran. Point number two, imagine the feeling a person will have when, and especially the ones that have social media, you will understand this better, that you know, if a very big celebrity or somebody who has a lot of following, you know, they put you like at and mentions, like, oh, he got mentioned. Somebody mentioned him. Or imagine the mention that you may get or an honorary mention that you might get if a, a, a president of a country or a president of an association or an organization, they mention you by name. The feeling that you and I are going to get at that moment is going to be very, you know, we're going to be very happy. We're going to be, you know, sometimes we might cry out of the abundance of happiness. As one of the narrations mentions that Ubay ibn Ka'ab, when he heard this, baka, he started crying out of happiness. And I want to leave everybody here with this one hadith, which might motivate us that we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mention us in his mala, in his sacred gathering. And if, you're, if you want your name to be mentioned in that gathering, then the hadith of Prophet وسلم, is something very, very interesting. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am with my servant, abdi bi, that whatever you think Allah is going to treat you like, that's how you're going to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. Okay? That I am with that person. When he remembers me. If you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're driving and you had this moment, you're like, Ya Allah. And you, you remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nafsihi dakhil inside, and you did not tell that to anybody. You did not say Allah out loud. It was dakhil inside of you. Allah is saying in this hadith. Allah will remember you without using your name out and without letting any angels know, but Allah will remember you internally. Then the hadith carries on and says, And if he, remind, if he remembers me in a gathering and he reminds people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I remember him in a gathering that is much better than the gathering that he remembered me in. وَإِن تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ شِبْرًا Shibr is basically this length. If the person gets close to me, shibran, one hand spans length, length. تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا Vira is this length. That if you get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six inches, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets closer to you, comes towards you. Then Allah says, If a person gets closer to me, an arm's length, I get closer to him. For this multiple narrations, I get closer to him, i.e. his entire length, or twice the length of what he got closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنْ أَتَانِي يَمْشِي and if he starts walking towards me, not just one step, if you start walking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to you in a form, harwala basically means, harwala is when we are in, in, when we are in Mecca, between Safa and Marwa, and, and that between the green lights, if you've been to Mecca, that action is called harwa. It's not running, it's not jogging, but it's a very fast paced walking. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets closer to you, comes closer to you. Harwala. These are the last blessed nights of the month of Ramadan. We have few nights left. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the tawfiq to truly worship him and understand that all Allah is waiting for is you to take that first step.
and he's going to be standing there waiting for you, inshallah. In the end, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send salutations of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim kathira wa kathira. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite names and with his infinite mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes Qur'an our forerunner and makes Qur'an the book that we recite the most. Allahumma arzukna tilawat al-Qur'ani ana al-layli wa atraf al-nahar ala al-wajh al-ladhi yurdika anna ya rabbal alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in his infinite names and in his infinite mercy that he never lets us disconnect from this Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah that he grants us the ability that we understand the message that has been sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you and for me and for, entire uni- for, for the entire universe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he opens our hearts so that we are able to read one or two verses, but get inspired by those verses and our actions and our ahman change towards the good. We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those who take multiple steps towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and to our surprise, we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over there for us. InshaAllah. InshaAllah.